Hey there, welcome to another episode of Mike's Collection. I'm Mike, and the part of my collection that I'm going to be talking about today is my G.I. Joe Creo collection. So uh, if you're not familiar with Creos, they were basically Hasbro's version of Lego. They're little brick figures. So I've never been a really big uh, brick figure guy. I had some Legos when I was a kid. Um, I collected the, the castle Lego. And my older brother Doug collected the space Lego. And we didn't have a ton of it. We had like kind of a bin of miscellaneous Lego that we had acquired. I think we might have inherited it, you know, as hand me downs from somebody at one point because we had we had some really old 70s Lego in our bin. Like we even had the weird gangly people before the little minifigure was invented. There was weird people and so yeah, we had some of that stuff and we had uh, you know, Happy Meals used to have little Lego sets. That was like usually city Lego. We had that stuff. So we had the miscellaneous bin that we could use to build stuff. But as far as the sets we collected, for me, it was the castle Lego. And I didn't have a ton of it. I had one kind of medium sized set, which was, uh, I think, called the Knight's Castle, which kind of was this pretty cool set that folded open kind of the way Castle Grayskull does. So you could kind of play inside and outside. And then I had like a little a wagon like a horse-drawn wagon and a little like medieval shop i don't know maybe it was like a blacksmith shop or something and i might have had one other little outpost or something that i can't really think of specifics so yeah i had a little bit of that stuff doug had a little bit of the uh, space lego he had one really big ship and then a couple other smaller sets and uh I guess the reason we never got super into Lego was partly because we were so into all these other toys. We, you know, G.I. Joe's, Transformers, He-Man, all that stuff. And I just wasn't as into building as other people are. Like, I still know people today, like grown-ups that buy Legos and love to build these elaborate sets. Um, I just liked to play with them. The building part wasn't all that fun to me. Once I had my castle built, I never wanted to take it apart again because I just wanted to play with it. Like, it was a play set and use my little figurines and play with them the same way I play with you know G.I. Joe or Transformers or anything else the only thing that was kind of strange about it is me and my brother always played together so we always had to come up with some sort of time travel storyline or something for his astronauts to be able to interact with my knights but anyway yeah so I was into Lego a little bit when I was a kid but I don't have a big fondness for it now I don't buy any Lego currently um, even though like I think the uh, you know the Star Wars sets and the Marvel sets are all pretty cool I just can't really get into any of that stuff Lego is pretty expensive and uh, I just don't really have the room so yeah I got rid of my Lego I don't have any of that castle Lego I think I just left it at my parents house and now my nephews go over and play with it um, so yeah I, I haven't really had any brick figures in my collection however in 2011 Hasbro launched Creo and it was kind of cool because they could, rather than license their stuff to Lego, they just could make Lego style sets of all their own stuff. And they started with Transformers in 2011. And the, they launched it initially with these big boxes where you could build a big Lego Optimus Prime and you could build them as a robot or build them as a truck. And it didn't really do anything for me. I didn't pay much attention to those. But I think kind of as an add-in to the big set, they kind of gave you like a little mini figure of Optimus Prime as well. And that was just kind of like a little bonus. And instead of like a Lego man, they called those things Creons. And uh, eventually they kind of walked away from the big build sets and they just kind of made the little Creon figures and they sold them in blind bags. And this was really kind of my first and basically only experience with blind bags. I'm not really into that type of collecting, but it was kind of fun to collect the little Transformer Creons in the little bags. Now, one thing I wouldn't have liked to do is buy them and get doubles. So fortunately, whenever they came out, even though the packages were the same, you could find online that there's a different number on the UPC codes. Um, so yeah, I would go and I'd look at all the unique numbers and I'd make sure to get one of each. So I have a good number of Transformer Creons, um, which I considered lumping into this video as well, but I think I have too many GI Joe ones that if I start adding my Transformers ones, It'll just get too long of a video. So I'll save the Transformer Creos for another video. But uh, yeah, so after Transformers, then Hasbro did Battleship. Um, I think they did Star Trek later, but G.I. Joe Creos launched in 2013. And uh, yeah, I thought these things were great. I loved these little things and I wanted to buy them all. And I, I think I got 
all of them for the most part. As far as the regular retail releases, there was multiple sets with vehicles and they were varying sizes. You could get like little teeny vehicles um, that you know were probably like 10 or 15 bucks and then you could get bigger sets which were maybe like 40 to 60 bucks. I don't really remember exactly because it's been a while. But uh, yeah, some of them were really hard to find in my area. Fortunately, I had a friend that went down to the States and got me most of the sets. So I was able to complete pretty much the entire G.I. Joe Creo collection, with the exception of the largest set, which was the Terror Drome, which is Cobra's headquarters. So this would have been a really cool set, but also a really expensive set. Um, so yeah, it's kind of a bummer that I never got this thing. But um, yeah, everything else I got is pretty cool. And I think I have all the minifigures. There was, I think, four or five waves of blind bags for G.I. Joe. And again, because of the little, the little uh, UPC identifier, I was able to buy all the individual characters. Um, the only Creon figures I wasn't able to get were the like uh, exclusives that they would sell at the uh, G.I. Joe conventions. Because I was more focused on buying the box sets of actual G.I. Joe figures from the conventions, and those things cost hundreds of dollars like I'm I'm talking five six hundred dollars I would spend on these exclusive figures that the fact that they were selling these little Lego men for like 50 bucks or something for this little set it was just more than I could deal with at the time so there was three um, convention sets and the little Creo sets matched up with what the big box set was that particular year so there was a Slaughter's Marauders pack um, there was an Eco Force pack and a Night Force pack so all of them were pretty cool. I wish I had them, uh, especially the little Cobra Mortal figure. That's that's a really cool little one there. But uh, yeah, I think I've got everything besides. So yeah, I think I'm going to start. I'm going to show you the vehicle sets, and then I'll get, jump into all the little mini Creons and see how they compare to the, other, the actual figures of those characters. So uh, yeah, let's take a look at the first set. So first up, we're going to take a look at one of my smaller sets, but it's one of my favorite sets. This is Checkpoint Alpha, and you'll see it's uh, it's exactly what the name says. It's a little checkpoint. And uh, what's so cool about this set is that it's a pretty good recreation of a vintage set that I had with my 80s G.I. Joe figures. So you'll see here, this is the vintage Checkpoint Alpha, which I loved because this was a nice, inexpensive little headquarters. And uh, me and my brother would use this when we were playing, but we didn't want to set up a big, giant battle with all the big bases. We could just have a little checkpoint alpha and just have our G.I. Joe's hang out there. And yeah, so I love that they remade it in Creo form. So here it is. So it doesn't look like much, but even just the fact that they give you this little barrier here, it just adds a little bit more to the set. You also get Firefly's motorcycle here. So you see, it's a pretty simple little thing. With the little Cobra logo on it. But I do like that it stands up on its own. It doesn't just topple over. And then here's Checkpoint Alpha itself. So it's got lots of little decals on there to keep it interesting. It's got a searchlight here that you can move. It's got this rotating cannon here. And this actually fires the weapon. A lot of sets have the same firing mechanism. I'm only going to do it once because I don't want to lose all these pieces. But if you click down on that, and it shoots forward. Some of them launch a lot better than that. That one didn't go very far. I think if I had pushed it down harder, it would have went shooting out. But yeah, some more decals you see there. And so here you got a little ladder for the guys to climb up onto the uh, the second level. So the ladder moves there. And then you've got a little computer in there as well. And that piece moves. It can rock back and forth. And it says there's a red alert because Cobra is coming. So yeah, a really basic little set. But enough fun little activities in there to make it interesting. Now, I don't have any of the Creons here to show you, but this set, as you saw on the instruction book, it did come with two figures. It came with Firefly and Law and his dog, Order. But I'm just going to show you the, all the figures afterwards. So for now, we're just going to look at the actual uh, vehicles and the, and the sets themselves. So next up, we're going to take a look at the Ninja Temple Battle. So you see here, this set came with four minifigures. So we've got Snake Eyes version two, Storm Shadow, and a couple of red ninjas. And there's not a whole lot to this set, um, but still, it's a fun and it was pretty inexpensive. So this set isn't based on any vintage G.I. Joe sets, but they did put out um, 
kind of a little dojo like this during the uh, new sculpt years of the early 2000s. So this is, I don't know if it's based on that, but it's very reminiscent of that set. But basically what you get here, you get four separate pieces. So here's the main piece. So it's got this cool arch here. I'm sure these things have a name officially, but I don't know what it is. And then it's got a couple of weapons that they can uh, pull off of here. So you get this spear and then you get a sword over on the other side. So this looks to be a place where maybe the ninjas would train. So here you've got another little weapons rack. So there's room for extra swords and stuff, but it comes with two little swords and one larger sword. So you can kind of clip those wherever you like. Then this here, this looks like it's got some ancient ninja scroll on there. You can lift that up. I'm not necessarily sure why, but I guess if somebody wanted to read that, they could pull it up close, but there's not much to this piece otherwise. And then lastly, you've got this little piece with two little swords clipped on there and this thing can spin around. So that looks to me like it would be a ninja training device as well. So yeah, I'm sure I would have had a ton of fun if I had this set as a kid, even though it's very basic, you know, with the four minifigures that it came with, it actually was a pretty good bang for your buck. So this next set is another small one, but uh, it comes with a bigger instruction booklet because I think you, you kind of get two small accessories, which makes it kind of more of a medium set. So this one was probably a little bit more expensive, but this is the Outpost Defense. So you've got this little G.I. Joe bunker, as well as a Cobra four-wheeler, which was called the Ferret, I believe. So take a look at these pieces here. So the Ferret is pretty great. It looks a lot like the vintage Ferret. So it's got that Cobra blue with the red highlights on there. It's got a little removable stick of dynamite here. Oops, comes out of that clip. So, you know, if you've got Firefly or somebody riding on this thing, he could, uh, you know, he's a saboteur, so it makes sense that he's got some explosives with him as he drives in to attack the outpost. Now the outpost itself. Um, I don't know if this is based on any vintage sets or not. And maybe not a vintage set, but it might be based on a set that they released later in the 2000s. I didn't have uh, the equivalent of this when I was a kid anyway. But again, it's got a firing missile on the front. And this thing can spin around. Whoops. Just pretty, it attaches pretty basically there. But so it came with Beachhead as the G.I. Joe to man the outpost. So if the ferret is riding up to attack him, he can pivot this as he needs to to take his shot. In there you see he's got another little computer. It says alert, alert, because Cobra is coming. And not much else on that side there. Got an antenna on the top. So it's simple, but it's fun. And it really kind of expanded the universe for this stuff. Having all this little stuff really adds up. And then you've got an ammo box here. And if you open that up, it came with a bunch of extra guns and bullet belts. So yeah, that's pretty cool too. Now we're getting to some of the really good stuff. So this set is called Serpent Armor Strike. So this armor here is kind of the equivalent of the old snake armor. It doesn't really look anything like it, but it's a big mech suit that a Cobra Trooper gets to wear. And then you've got the G.I. Joe Vamp, which is possibly G.I. Joe's most famous vehicle the uh, the gi joe jeep so there you see the set so let's take a closer look at the vamp here it's pretty great so it's got the uh the headlights on the front there it's got a little gun that's clipped off so your joe can pull off his weapon if he jumps out of the jeep um let me see the doors the doors on the jeep open up there which is pretty cool it's got a machine gun on the top which can be rotated and you can really kind of move the position of that wherever you want to it's got a little bullet belt coming off the side so yeah, it's got a towing mechanism, so it can tow certain things behind it as well. The wheels, the rubberized wheels, and they spin really good. So yeah, just a really cool set. You see the steering wheel in there. So that came with Clutch, who I'll show you later. And now this is your first look at one of the G.I. Joe Creons, because I left this guy in here. So you've got a Cobra Pilot in this thing. So it's kind of a weird set of armor. It does swivel around. He's got kind of like a flamethrower and maybe a laser on this side. This hand, he's got a claw, which you can open and close. Um, but yeah, so to, to get him out of there, you just lift this compartment up and then your pilot, he just sits inside there. So this Cobra pilot is not based on any vintage figure, but if you pop his helmet off, you'll see there, he's got the kind of classic Cobra 
balaclava mask on there. He's got a little weapon. The detail on him, you know, it's pretty cool. Some nice armor on there. And the helmet. And it's pretty cool that the, uh, the goggles go up and down as well. So yeah, a nice little figure. And I'm going to show you some really nice Creons as we continue to go through this video. So this here is another good size set. It's called Cobra Armored Assault. You see it came with Flint and a couple of Cobra Troopers there. So Flint's got the little G.I. Joe ATV. And then you've got this big armored Cobra vehicle, which is not based on a vintage uh, vehicle at all. It seems to be a brand new concept, um, but it's a really cool new concept. So here we are. So you see here, this is pretty much a very similar build to the Cobra Ferret that we already looked at, except it's in G.I. Joe Green. You've got uh, Flint's shotgun, which is his classic weapon. So that's strapped to the front there that he can pop off of there. A little steering mechanism in the front. And then he's also got this. This is another one of those firing kind of rocket launcher weapons. So he can pop that out of there and that would fit right in Flint's hand. So it's pretty cool that he's got a couple options for his weapons. Again, rubberized wheels. They roll pretty good. So yeah, that's a great little vehicle. And now let's take a look at this bad boy. So this is the armored assault vehicle from Cobra. So it's got three rubberized wheels on each side. Looks really great. So your pilots can go in here. So this thing here lifts up and you would see them there in the cockpit. This whole front mechanism lifts up so you can see, get your guy seated in there. Oh, and now I, I broke that off, but what are you gonna do? Uh, up top here, you've got a swiveling gun turret. So a guy can sit up there. You can see he's got a little targeting computer. Both these missiles fire in a certain way. If you pushed in on the front of them, these things would fly out the front. Um, now along here, these rails can lift up. So you could see if you've got bad guys, some Cobra Troopers inside there, you could protect them by putting that down. So you've got that on each side. The back here, so that opens up and you see everything going on inside there. So there's a bunch of uh, weapons all clipped inside, various guns. And there's like a bench you could have your maybe little Creos tucked inside there. So this is a bit of a troop carrier. But yeah, all in all, really cool. This thing here, the whole front lifts up so you can get a better look at what's going on there. So you've got a couple of little grenades as well as the weapons. Not a whole lot of room for troopers in there actually, but still pretty cool idea. So yeah, this is a great little vehicle. So this next set is the Ghost Striker X-16 Jet, as well as you get a Cobra Asp in there as a little bonus. So yeah, this is a pretty cool set as well. So you see here the Asp, this is a classic Cobra vehicle from the 80s. I actually never had one of these when I was a kid, but this does a pretty good job of representing what the Asp looked like. It was basically something that could be towed, so that's what this is all about here. You can see you could hook this up to the back of another vehicle and it could be towed along here. And then you've got these rotating kind of missile launchers. These things here are the little harness that you lift them up so you can sit a Cobra Trooper in there at the targeting computer. And yeah, this thing spins around really good, 360. And then you've got these two things here to kind of anchor it in place. And yeah, it's a really cool little vehicle. And then as for the uh, the Ghost Striker, now this is not a G.I. Joe from Jet that I'm really familiar with. This came out after I had stopped collecting G.I. Joe. It's still from the vintage toy line, but it's from like the 90s. I would have preferred to get the G.I. Joe Sky Striker, which was the first and most famous G.I. Joe Jet. But... Um, you know, that probably would have been a much bigger and more expensive set. So it makes sense that they went with this thing here just for cost purposes. And it still came with Ace, who is the original G.I. Joe pilot that came with the Sky Striker. So yeah, this is a pretty cool set. It's got the, uh, the missile launchers here again. So you just flick on the back and the missiles would shoot forward. Um, the landing gear here, I believe they can, uh, yeah, they can go back like so. So when it takes off, you can push the landing gear back. Uh, I don't know if there's much else to see here. So you get this thing here spins on the back. And yeah, I think that's about it. Cockpit opens from both sides. So you can see in there, he's got his little computer and his little, his little toggle stick as well. So yeah, cool piece. So this next set is the G.I. Joe Dragonfly Helicopter, along with, you get a Cobra with the, uh, the Cobra Glider, which is called the Cobra... I don't remember right now. It had a name. Anyway, I actually don't have the glider out right now because I think I've got it tucked away with the actual little character. So I'll show you that later when I'm showing you the Creons. But for now, here is the Dragonfly. 
So again, cool piece. It's got missile firing action on each side there. So if you push that clip in, this missile will launch out. This gun here on the front, it can pivot around different directions. The cockpit pops open. You see he's got his couple little computer panels, little control stick there as well. The, uh, whoops, <laughs> I was gonna say the blades spin, but maybe I shouldn't spin them in that manner. But yeah, you can flick this anywhere and these should spin around okay for you. Maybe not. Anyway, you get the idea. Uh, on the back here, these, these panels can be adjusted. But yeah, pretty cool. Nice looking piece and a good size, a good size piece. And of course it came with Wild Bill, uh, which is G.I. Joe's well-known helicopter pilot. So, oh, okay, here, there's a little button on the side. I was thinking there was, but I haven't done this in a while. So a little button on the side there, if you push that, that makes the blades go. That makes more sense. Now this set here is called Fire Bat Attack. You can see it came with Wakondo, Bazooka, as well as an AVAC pilot, which, uh, you know, those are all great characters that you would definitely want, but it does seem a bit of a crime that the Wolverine vehicle doesn't come with CoverGirl because when the vintage toy came out, it came packaged with CoverGirl. That's her vehicle. So yeah, I'm not sure why they did not give us a CoverGirl with this set. But anyway, here is the Firebat. And so yeah, this looks a lot like the vintage toy. It's a really good representation of it. The, uh, the canopy lifts up. Again, you get a little toggle switch inside. <laughs> and the wings fold up just like the wings on the uh, vintage Firebat. That's because the Firebat toy would sit in the center of the, uh, the Techno or the Terradrome. And I believe this one does the same. If I had the Terradrome set, I think this would fit in the middle. But yeah, it's a really nice looking vehicle anyway. And these panels are, these are all adjustable. And it oh, looks like I'm missing a couple little pieces here, but you can see it's got two missiles on the bottom as well. So nice looking little set. And then the Wolverine. So this thing is great. So all of these six missiles will launch. You'll see they've got the little launchers here. So if I click down on any one of these, the pair of missiles will shoot out. So yeah, really cool. So it's got a little cockpit there for the, uh, the driver. Um, this panel here you'll see opens up and there's some tools inside there. There's some dynamite and it looks like a pickaxe. So that's pretty cool. Over here, you've got a little chainsaw that's attached to the side. Some decals on the front. And this here, I believe, was intended to be a tow cable. So you can, I'm not sure how that works. But uh, yeah, I really like the treads on this. There's a rubberized tread on the wheels and it really works. So as you push it along, the, it takes a little bit of effort, but you'll see the wheels turn and the tread actually moves with it. Yeah, so really cool. This is one of my favorite vehicles in the set. And by the way, yeah, this, this thing here all swivels around. So yeah. Great. Now this is one of the bigger sets. This is the Thunder Wave Jet Boat. So you see it comes with this big boat, which is not based on any vintage toy, and it comes with Cutter, who came with the hovercraft in the vintage toy line. Then you've got Stalker that came with another little, uh, kind of a mini G.I. Joe Jeep. And then you've got Copperhead, who's riding the Cobra Moccasin. And here they are. So the Moccasin boat, it's pretty simple, but it's got that kind of iconic design. Now they went with the uh, red um, look, which I think maybe is, it might've had this look when it was painted, repainted for the Python Patrol or something, but the original Cobra Moccasin was green. So I probably would have preferred kind of this aqua green color, but it looks quite nice. And you see, it's got a couple of extra weapons on there. So Copperhead can jump up and grab a couple of machine guns and open fire there. This is kind of the big fan on the back. But yeah, nice and simple little boat. This thing here, also really cool. It's got the uh, the harness there that you can lock your pilot in place. It's got this machine gun on the top here that spins around, rubberized tires, the uh, the lights on the front move. Yeah, not a whole lot to it, but cool little toy. But then let's talk about this boat. So yeah, this is really cool. And I like it because we didn't get anything like this in the vintage line. I'm not 100% sure, but considering that, um, Hasbro did a 
a, a what was it battleship um creo sets the year before i wouldn't be surprised if this set was reused from one of their battleship sets but uh, yeah it's a really good size this is the biggest set i've shown you thus far so you see here it's got a little ramp on the back so i guess you could get vehicles or crew to go in there uh inside the cabin there you'll see there's some guns strapped in there there's places to store additional guns there's a little uh, computer terminal there with a big red light on it there's a, a seat and a wheel for i guess the captain in there then up top here this piece moves i'm not really sure why same as these antennas these pieces both move up and down um, some guns there that you can pivot now up front here there's a little spear gun i guess maybe it it ro rotates up and down a little bit this thing here rotates around fully and this has got the missile firing action so if you flick the back of that that missile would take off and yeah i actually can't remember if there's any other features on this thing that i'm not showing you but uh yeah you see it's a good size boat and it's a it's a pretty fun play set so this is the biggest of the sets. This is the Arashikaji Dojo. So here you'll see you get a Hiss tank that came with Destro and Baroness. You've got a couple of ninja characters. You've got the uh, ninja master. It's either the soft or the hard master. I can't remember which one. Uh, then you've got Snake Eyes on his ninja bike. You've got his wolf timber. And you've got, just got all kinds of extra stuff here. So let's take a look at it. So it's hard for me to fit it all on screen. So first I'll show you, there's the little uh, Snake Eyes motorcycle, which is pretty cool. It's got the little Arashikaji sticker on the front there. It's got a couple of swords poked in there that he can uh, either use to, I guess, charge in and stab somebody, or he can take them off and do some uh, do some fighting. And yeah, you can kind of spin those out. So that, yeah, that makes for kind of a deadly looking motorcycle. Then you've kind of got these separate pieces. So here you can kind of set these apart from the main temple, the main dojo. So it's got some nice little like flame effects here. It's got some weapons, some size, and some uh, kind of like night sticks are kind of tucked in there that you can use. A little lantern here that swings. And then whoever wants to guard this temple can stay on the roof. And they've got this spinning crossbow here, which again kind of shoots off in missile, missile action. So that's what it looks like from the other side. There's not a whole lot to it, but it's kind of cool. And again, just expands this set. It makes it feel bigger than it maybe is. Here's another little kind of outpost. So same idea, there's another crossbow on the top there, little lanterns, uh, little torches. Uh, these things here, that's meant, it's kind of like uh, the garage for the motorcycle. It's that thing, the motorcycle parks in there and that holds it in place. And they advertise that maybe the bike is supposed to be hidden in there because this wall just kind of pop, pops out really easily. You see like it doesn't attach at the top, it's smooth there. And the idea is that the motorcycle is supposed to just kind of drive through this this screen back here and pop out. So there you go, get that out of the way. Then we've got this piece here, which there's a lot going on here and I don't quite understand it. Again, it's like a little step up into this little temple. There's this thing here, you pull it out and there's a sword stuck inside this clear piece here. I don't really know what it's supposed to do, but on the back, you push a button and it lights up. So I'm not sure what that's supposed to signify necessarily. And then in the back there, this temple seems to house like a secret compartment. You pull that out and there's a couple of blue gems inside. Again, I don't think that's based on any particular story point. So I'm not sure what that's all about. But again, it's just fun to have all these little extras because you can spread these out quite a bit and makes the whole dojo temple seem much larger than it is. All right, so let's take a look at the dojo. So there you see it at its full height. And uh, yeah, there's a lot going on here too. So three levels. So you can have guys on each of these little sections of the roof. And it's got a lot of little torches and ninja banners here throughout. It's got these big doors which actually swing open. I can't remember if they swing outwards or inwards. Anyway, I'll get to that from the inside. So yeah, there's not a whole lot to do with it on the outside, but let's spin it around and take a look. So yeah, you'll see the doors there. They should swing outward. I'm having a little trouble with them. Oh, they, sw they swing inward. There you go. 
doors swing inward like so. And then there's, this is supposed to be like a booby trap, I guess. When somebody comes through that door, you can flick this, uh, this weapon here, and these two axes will come swinging down and, uh, yeah, give somebody a nasty surprise as they come in that front door. Um, here, let me just close those doors a little bit. You'll see a uh, wanted poster on the inside there for Storm Shadow. And you see right in front of it, there's these two planks and there's a cut through them. That's supposed to be where somebody can karate chop the wood in half. So they would, you know, sorry, you missed it there, but you push down with your finger and that wood snaps in half. Over here is a training dummy. So this guy's on a rotating base. So your ninjas could punch on him and, and train, I guess. And again, you get some more swinging lanterns here. So there's room up here on the, on the roof for people to do battle. Uh, yeah, so there's there's lots going on with this set, and it's pretty cool. It's a good size. But my favorite thing about this whole set is the Cobra Hiss tank that it comes with as well. The Hiss tank was always my favorite vehicle out of the whole G.I. Joe mythology here. So let me get this other stuff out of the way so I can get a better shot of the Hiss tank. Okay, so here's the Hiss tank all by itself. So it's got that iconic kind of silhouette of the Hiss tank with the big triangular treads and the treads work. So you push this thing along and the wire or the, uh, the rubber tread moves along with the wheels. Um, the front here, you can open the cockpit and there's some computer panels and whatnot for the pilot inside there. Then you've got a seat on the top. Somebody can sit in there and this thing spins around. You've got two firing missiles uh, around the back. You can open this compartment here. There's another kind of like surprise cannon inside there. And I believe you can open, maybe open these panels on the side. Again, it's been a while since I played with this thing. But there is room for additional characters inside there. Anyway, I just think it looks awesome. I love it in the blue, even though the original his tank was black. I really like the look of this thing here with the blue and the red. Yeah, so very cool. Love the Histank. Now this is the last set I have to show you, and even though it's not the biggest, I prefer this one over the Ninja Temple, because even though the Temple was cool, this one here is based on a vintage toy. It's the uh, G.I. Joe Battle Platform, and I had this as a kid, and I really loved it, because my brother Doug had the original G.I. Joe headquarters, so when I got this, this was kind of my biggest G.I. Joe playset, and this is where kind of all my G.I. Joes hung out, and I really love this thing. So yeah, you see it's got uh, Cobra Commander, it's got a Cobra Trooper with the Trouble Bubble. Uh, it looks like Roadblock on the, uh, on the platform itself. It's got a Cobra Trooper with the Cobra Fang helicopter, and then it looks like Duke on the uh, G.I. Joe Ram motorcycle. So here is everything you get with it. So first off, let's take a look at the Ram. So this is a really cool motorcycle, and it's got that big old machine gun on the side, just like you'd expect to see it there. A little first aid kit. Little clips to store additional weapons. Yeah, love this thing. Of the three motorcycles I have, this one's definitely my uh, my favorite. The Trouble Bubble. It was always kind of a weird little Cobra vehicle, but an iconic one. So you put your pilot inside of there, and they just ride around. You've got uh, missiles on the side, little rotating gun on the front, and the bubble dome just comes down and protects them. The thrusters on the back there. This looks a lot like the vintage Trouble Bubble. And yeah, really cool. The other Cobra vehicle it comes with is the Fang helicopter. Now this is another thing I love because I had the Fang when I was a kid and I liked it a lot. It's just a simple little one-man helicopter for major blood. And yeah, blade spins around like that. I don't think this one has a button for the blade to spin. But uh, yeah, it's got the little ball jointed uh, kind of laser in the front just like the vintage toy did. And yeah, it's simple but really cool. Now let's take a look at the platform itself. I find this one might actually have more play value than the original. So let me just pop this up here. So for starters, it's got this whole extra component, which kind of is just off to the side. Now, I don't know what there's much, I don't know much of, about what it's supposed to be. Like these, this whole thing lifts up. And I don't know if it's got, maybe supposed to be the electrical room or something for the base, because it's got all these warning lights um, yeah, it kind of looks like there'd be breakers in here. 
I don't know, these little ladders on the back. Again, I don't understand what any of this stuff is really for. Caution sticker on them. But again, it just helps to expand the set and it gives you another little area for your figures to play on. And then as for the base itself, so it's a lot, it's a lot like the vintage one. So it's got the four main stations. So you've got a swiveling missile launcher on this side. And so yeah, each of these missiles can be launched. So you've got, you always have a GI Joe kind of manning that station over here. You've got a spinning gun turret so that there's a chair there for Joe to sit with the double barreled gun, just like the vintage toy. Then you've got the helicopter pad here. There's not much to see here. There's kind of a little light you can move to maybe help, you know, get a helicopter in there properly. And then over here, you've got the uh, the computer room. So you've got here kind of a, uh, a spotlight here that spins around. Uh, this whole panel lifts up. So you can see the, uh, the computer screen here. It looks like they're looking at the trouble bubble attacking. Inside there, you got computer screens on both walls. Um, a whole bunch of little computer monitors there as well. Uh, the chair spins around. Uh, there's some extra tools laying around here. And you see underneath the set, this is something that the original toy didn't have. But there's a little weapons rack or a toolbox on the back there. So you can see it's got uh, like a walkie-talkie, um, maybe like a whole toolbox there, an axe, a hammer. And this thing here is really neat. I'll pop it off to show you. There's a little cooler here. You pop that open. And there's a couple cans of Yojo Cola, which is something that they used to drink. Uh, I think I can't remember if it was both of the cartoon or and the comic books or one or the other, but I do remember Joe Cola, so it's kind of cool that you get those in there too. So yeah, a really cool set. I like this one a lot. There's so much to do. There's lots of room to display your figures. Like there's so many little pegs to put their little feet that you can fit your whole army on here if you really were really determined to do so. Yeah, just a great, great set. Now here is the first batch of Creons. So I'm going to start with the Cobras, and then I'll move on to the G.I. Joes. And my original intent when I sat down to do this video was I was going to show you each single Creon, and I was going to hold it up and compare it to the vintage figure, because I'm pretty sure I have the vintage counterpart to uh, every figure here. However, um, this video is already at like 35 minutes long, and I realized I've got probably 70 or 80 of these little Creon figures. And if I go through them one at a time, it's going to be way too time consuming. So I'm just going to show you them in batches. So first up here, you've got the Cobra Trooper. So this is, you know, the standard, what they call blue shirts, the most basic infantry members of Cobra's army. So these guys have been around since G.I. Joe was launched in 1982. And you see, none of these figures are the exact same because I didn't buy any duplicates. So it's really cool that... Uh, when Hasbro produced these sets, they gave us a whole bunch of different variations of the blue shirt because most people would like to have a little squadron of them. But I'm glad that they didn't just give us the exact same thing over and over again, even though a lot of people probably would have been fine with that. I like that there's a little bit of variation. So this guy here is probably the closest to the uh, original trooper, just the way that design is painted on him with his kind of web gear with all these different straps and stuff on him. So that's pretty basic. So he looks like the original 1982 trooper now this guy here just with the red goggles he looks a little bit more like the troopers that they put out in the movie line for uh, the movie gi joe retaliation even though the figure the characters actually didn't look like that in the movie they did upgrade the blue shirt trooper for that movie toy line uh, another notable one here this guy here with the bazooka so this guy here you see he's got some camo some black camo on his uh on his shirt and he's got black pants instead of blue pants this guy kind of looks like one of the night force uh, variations of the cobra trooper so that's pretty cool that we got him otherwise uh, let me see we got this guy here with a little gas mask on and all this stuff the helmets are removable the gas mask is removable you see there he's just got the little red bell clava and some sunglasses on underneath there which is kind of weird but uh, yeah, the yellow straps on this guy, that's a little more uh, reminiscent of the cartoon. That's how the figures looked in the animated show. And they actually made some action figures based on the animated look. And so this guy reflects that pretty closely. So 
Pretty cool. Those are the Cobra Troopers. Now let's move on to some more Cobras. So here we have some Cobra Ninjas. Now these guys here, it's maybe more fair to say that these guys aren't all Cobra. Um, here we've got the Cobra Ninja Slice. And this figure looks a lot like uh, the vintage figure with that kind of little speckled paint design and that kind of fencing type mask. Um, one thing that's kind of neat about this guy and a lot of the other ninjas is they actually have little cloth belts. So it was just a little thin piece of cloth that went between their uh, their torso and their legs. And so you see he's got a backpack. A lot of the ninjas have the same backpack where you can slide a sword in the back or also you can slide two of them to crisscross uh, across one another on the back like so. And you'll see that on some of the other figures. So there's Slice. And then here we have two kind of nameless red ninjas. So these guys were, you know, pretty common in the G.I. Joe comic books. And we saw them in the G.I. Joe Retaliation movie. So, again, they could have given us two identical ones. But it's nice that they at least gave us a hood on this guy to give us a little bit of a variation. Plus, they have different weapons. This guy's got kind of those like Wolverine claws there as well. So those guys are pretty cool. Then we've got a black ninja who uh, people who are aware of international G.I. Joes We'll know that this character is Ninja Ku, who was a, uh, a black version of Stormtrooper that was only released uh, internationally. Um, I'm not sure what they named this guy in the package. I'm pretty sure they didn't call him Ninja Ku. They probably just said Storm Shadow. But uh, hardcore Joe fans know who he's supposed to be. Then back here we've got Storm Shadow. So here's the Creo Storm Shadow based on his original action figure look. And you know, they do a, a really good job of recreating all that there. Great little figure. This one here, this actually isn't a Creo, but I decided to just lump it into this video. I ordered some G.I. Joes from some guy online, and he actually just threw this little Lego version of Storm Shadow in as a gift. Um, and it's you can see it's much more leggo -y. His arms, the way they move, are more like a, a Lego guy. They only move uh, up and down, as opposed to the Creos, who have a little bit more movement. Um, so yeah, this is just a custom thing. I don't think this is official in any way, but uh, he's a lot like the Creos, and he's pretty cool. Anyway, the last thing I've got here are two of these gray ninjas. Now, I can't remember what these guys were called in the packaging. I don't know if they called them gray ninjas or ninja trainees, but these guys came with the dojo. And these guys might be like uh, Snake Eyes when he was undergoing his training because they did make an action figure of Snake Eyes in a very similar outfit, which was supposed to be his ninja trainee outfit. So... These two figures here, maybe they're supposed to represent Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow when they were like young men and training as ninjas. But, uh, or you could just use them as, you know, trainees at the Ninja Dojo and just totally original characters, whatever you want to do. But they're both pretty cool. And I like that they have alternate weapons as well. Now this here is just a random mix of different Cobra Troopers. So up here we've got the AVAC, which is one of the uh, Cobra Pilots. And this guy flies the fire bat. And so this figure looks pretty good compared to the uh, the vintage counterpart. Next up, we have another Cobra Trooper. And this is the one that came with the, uh, the glider that I failed to show you earlier with the set that it came with. So that is the, uh, the Cobra... Damn it, I forgot the name again. The Cobra Claw, I think. Anyway, so this guy I think is just supposed to be a Cobra Trooper. You take that off, he's got the standard Bella Clava mask on there. But with this red helmet and goggles, it kind of looks like it could be the Cobra Pilot Wild Weasel. And we didn't actually get a Wild Weasel figure, so I like to think of this as Wild Weasel. And you'll see there he's carrying some top secret plans. So that's kind of a cool little extra. It looks like he maybe stole some plans and then took off on his glider. Then we've got the Crimson Guardsman. So this is a classic Cobra Trooper. Everybody loves these guys. These are kind of more of the elite Cobra Troopers. And this guy looks really great with the uh, the red and the, the silver emblem. And here's another fan favorite, the uh, Snow Serpent. So this is uh, Cobra's first Arctic Trooper. And you know, he looks really good. He's got this big heavy coat that goes on over his regular little torso there. And he even comes with an extra little missile launcher to replicate the, uh, the weapon of the 80s version of the Snow Serpent too. Then we've got a couple variations of the Battle Android Trooper. So this guy here is kind of the more basic uh, Cobra Bat. And so the original Bat in the 80s had all these alternate hands, so you could change out his hands for a flamethrower or a claw. 
So this guy, he comes with like a chainsaw as an alternate hand. Uh, he's also got a backpack where you can carry extra pieces. And then he's got this kind of flame piece. So I guess that can replicate his flamethrower hand. And yeah, so he looks really good. And then they gave us a variation of him. So this is a battle damaged bat. So you can see his faceplate's been smashed and one of his like optic nerves is showing. And the glass uh, plate on the front is all cracked and smashed. And he's also got an alternate hand. So he's got a drill there and then a different backpack as well. And then you'll notice this next guy, I don't have, have him on one of the display bases. It was appreciated that most of these guys did come with a little Creo display base. It keeps them from toppling over. The reason he doesn't have one is because he's got his uh, flippers in. So this is a Cobra Eel, which is the Cobra Frogman. And you know, he looks just like his vintage counterpart too. He looks really great. He's got a kind of spear gun weapon and the goggles here. Anybody with the goggles, they'll just kind of flip up. And what's neat about a lot of these guys is the vintage figure, you could never take the helmets off of the eel, but uh, here you can. Not much to see under there, but still, it's kind of neat. And lastly, I have the Cobra Night Viper. So he's got his big, long sniper rifle there. He looks a lot like the vintage version of the Night Viper. And he even has this kind of ridiculously oversized thing that flips down, and I guess doesn't quite work the way it's supposed to but in the vintage figure this was kind of like a uh, you know like a telescope or binoculars thing that flipped down over his eyes and uh, yeah so this is kind of ridiculously oversized and it doesn't quite line up with his eyes but just seeing it there it's definitely reminiscent of the classic night viper and the colors are pretty much spot on so i really like this guy too so here we have the last couple of nameless cobra troopers and now we're starting to get into some of the name cobras here so we'll start on the top. So here we have the basic infantry Cobra Viper. So these are the guys that came out in the vintage line and kind of replaced the classic blue shirt. And this guy looks awesome with the goggles up on the top of his helmet like that and everything. He looks exactly like the vintage figure, which is great. And you see there, he's got a gun as well as a little grenade there too. And then we've got the Tele Viper. Now this guy I think looks even better than the classic version. I never really liked the classic 80s Tele Viper figure. But this guy here, I think he looks really good. He doesn't suffer from the big melon head that the vintage figure did. And then his backpack here, he's got this little hose that connects to his kind of, I don't know, I never really understood this weapon. This is reminiscent of the weapon that the vintage figure came with. I don't know if I always thought it was like a sonic rifle or something, but uh, yeah, looks pretty good. Next up, we've got the Alley Viper. So this is Cobra's Urban Assault Trooper. And this guy is perfect here. He's got his shield and he's got his little protective visor that folds down you pop that up and he's got a little blue mask underneath just like on the uh, the vintage figure so he looks pretty great and then he even has the gun as well as the kind of uh, grappling hook gun so that's again right from the vintage figure and uh, that can clip on the side of his his uh, backpack there and he also has room there to store some explosives or, uh, or something else there so great little figure and now we're into the name guys. So this is Copperhead. This is the guy that drives the Cobra Water Moccasin. And this is again, one of those characters who you could never take the helmet off in the vintage figure, but here you can take his helmet off and you, you see a little bit more of him, but not much. So yeah, great little figure there. Next we have Cobra's Saboteur Firefly. So everybody loves this guy in his gray camo. And then he's got a backpack where he's got some dynamite that he can store in there. Just looks really cool. Love this guy. Now we've got some of the Dreadnoughts. So we've got Ripper here, who was always my favorite Dreadnought. And so again, his weapons here do a pretty good job of replicating his vintage weapons. He had, he had kind of a claw weapon in the vintage line. This is much more oversized and a little silly looking, but it's still pretty cool. For this hair piece, they've kind of replicated his mohawk pretty well. Another little inside joke there, you see he's got some grape soda. And these guys were always drinking grape soda in the comics and the cartoons. So that's just a nice little nod. That's the kind of thing that makes me realize that somebody at Hasbro is paying attention. Because sometimes they make decisions that really kind of annoy me and other hardcore fans. Like when they change a character's name or they release, release a character with like yellow hair. And then the next time they release version two, he's got like a black beard and... You're like, how come his hair color changed and that sort of stuff? And it seems like they're not even paying attention. But then when they do things like include grape soda, you know they've got some G.I. Joe fans working there. And then we've got Torch. So this is the guy with the flamethrower. 
So again, he's got a really cool flamethrower weapon, the hose that connects it to the backpack. So yeah, he looks really great too. Then you've got their leader, Zartan, who's the master of disguise with his removable hood. And you just get a bald Zartan underneath there. It was always kind of a question for a lot of people whether this was supposed to be his hood or his hair when it comes to the vintage cartoon and whatnot. But uh, in here, you might be wondering why he's carrying this extra head around. Well, like the vintage figure, because he was a master of disguise, he had a backpack, and inside he stored this little bearded face that you could tuck in, and it, it tucked into the sides of the hood, so he had a different face. So in this version here, I could pop the Zartan head off and put this one on, and that's supposed to replicate his vintage disguise. So that's pretty fun. And then here's his sister, Zorana. So again, she's got the kind of mohawk uh, like hairstyle there, which looks really good. She's carrying a grenade and then her gun here. This does a good job of replicating her like spinning bladed weapon that she had in the vintage toy line. So this little blade actually spins around and looks pretty good. Now it would have been nice to get all the dreadnoughts, but it seems especially a shame that we don't have their other sibling Xandar or the other original dreadnought buzzer. But uh, even still, this is a pretty cool little collection. Now these are the last of my Cobra figures. So first up, we've got Scrap Iron. And you see here, he comes with his little missile launcher, which is something that the vintage figure also came with. So that's really cool to get that piece there. His goggles flip up and you see his scarred face. So some nice detail there. I love how they've replicated his original costume. It looks really good in the brick format. Now this guy here is a nice surprise. We got Nemesis Enforcer, the kind of crazy bat-winged you know, prehistoric creature from the animated G.I. Joe movie. Um, you know, there's a couple other characters that were from the uh, Cobra La team, but we never got them in the Creos, so it's kind of a surprise that they would give us Nemesis Enforcer. But uh, yeah, he looks awesome. He's got the bat wings there. You see how they're attached so they can be moved around. And then he's got these things here because he had these big blades on his wrist. So they replicate that quite nicely. And yeah, I think he looks great. Then we've got Major Blood. He looks really good with his eye patch there. Well, helmet pops off. Something we couldn't do before. And he's got the one black arm, which again, it's a long, it's been long debated whether the vintage figure had a robotic arm or just an armored arm because it never moved. There was no joint in the elbow of the vintage figure, which was kind of odd, but they've done that here too. So that looks pretty cool. Then we've got the crazy Dr. Mindbender here with his bare chest and cloth cape. So the cape looks just like the vintage figure's cape, just a little bit shorter. And then he's got some big crazy weapon here. I'm not sure what that's all supposed to be, but looks pretty good. Now here's Destro. So I don't know if it's kind of hard to see on the camera here, but he's actually got a chrome reflective head just like he's supposed to. And then he's got a really nice kind of facial expression painted on there, a little scowl. But yeah, it's really not picking it up on the camera because of the glare. But yeah, he looks really good with his open chest there and the... Uh, He's got his little briefcase that says Mars, which is the company he owns. And it opens up, I think. I'm not sure if it opens up or not, but uh, still, really cool little figure. Then we've got the Baroness. So here she's got a little map. And she's got a big old gun. And yeah, she looks pretty good too. A lot like the classic figure. Then we've got one of the Crimson Twins. So this is Zamont. You can tell because he's got the scar on his face under his eye there. So his twin brother Tomax is supposed to look identical, except with the sash and everything going the opposite way. And Tomax was my favorite of the two because when I had these toys when I was a kid, I had Tomax and my brother had Zaymont. So yeah, I wish I'd have Tomax. I wish I had both of them, but if I was going to only have one, I would have preferred Tomax. But he came packaged with the Terror... I keep getting screwed up. I don't remember if it was the Terror Drome or the Technodrome. But yeah, he came with the big Cobra headquarters, and uh, so yeah, I'm unlikely to get him anytime soon. And lastly, we have Cobra Commander. Now, he also has the reflective chrome face, which is really cool, but it's not so bad that you can't see it in great detail here because he doesn't have any uh, anything painted on. the. F it's just a chrome piece there altogether. Take the helmet off. So yeah, it's just a solid chrome piece with no painted detail. And yeah, so this is based on the... Uh, Battle Helmet original version of Cobra Commander. And yeah, looks pretty great. So there's my Cobra Creos. And now we can move on to the Joes. 
So let's start with some G.I. Joe martial artists. So first up we've got Snake Eyes. And you'll see I've got two versions of Snake Eyes here. The first one is the Commando Snake Eyes, which is based on the 82 figure. So this is kind of before his uh, ninja background was really fleshed out. And uh, yeah, this is a great looking version of Snake Eyes version one. And then by the time we got version two from 1985, this is where he had adopted his more well-known look with the visor. And uh, this is the first version that also came with his wolf timber. So we get a nice little Creo version of timber here as well. And one thing that's kind of cool about this that you could never do with the vintage figure is kind of lift the visor up and you can see his eyes underneath there. So that's pretty cool. Then we've got Jinx. So she's got that kind of cloth belt that I showed you on uh, Slice earlier. Um, this here does a really good job of creating her double-sided staff from the vintage toy line. She's got a sword on the back there as well. So she looks really good. And then we've got Scarlet. Now this is based on the original 1982 Scarlet figure. Again, before her martial arts background was really explored. But uh, yeah, they do a good job with her too and create, recreating her like crossbow weapon. Then we've got Snake Eyes' apprentice, uh, Kamakura. Now you might not be familiar with him because he was introduced kind of in the, uh, the 2000s version of G.I. Joe. But he's a character I really came to appreciate. And actually in the comic books these days, the original Snake Eyes has died and this guy has replaced him as the new Snake Eyes. And now we have Quick Kick. So classic Quick Kick with his bare feet and his no shirt. His nunchucks are actually two pieces, so his nunchucks actually can spin around a little bit, which is kind of cool. And there's another little kind of inside joke. He's got a frozen fudgy bar. So yeah, great looking version of Quick Kick. Then we've got Storm Shadow again, but this is the good guy version of Storm Shadow after he had shaken off the effects of Dr. Mindbender's brainwave scanner. So there you go, he looks pretty cool. Hood pops off, I believe. But it's too difficult to get off right now, but you get the idea. I'm sure it's just a plain white mask underneath of there. And then we've got, I think it's the Soft Master. There was, a, there was characters named the Soft Master and the Hard Master. Um, one of them received a figure in the modern era, and I believe it was the Soft Master. So yeah, this does a pretty good job of recreating the look of that figure. All right, let's move on to the next batch of Joes. Okay, so here we have the G.I. Joe Medic, or at least one of them. This is Lifeline. And so, yeah, his outfit, does it rep, uh, replicates the original pretty good. They even managed to squeeze the whole word rescue in there on his little teeny leg. So he's got a little uh, rescue kit as well, just like the vintage figure. Then we got Beachhead. So he's another fan favorite. And he looks really good. All the iconic elements are there with the, uh, the green mask, the camo pants, and uh, yeah, the kind of explosive strap that goes over his one shoulder there. So yeah, everything looks really good there. Then we've got uh, Leatherneck. Now this guy, this isn't the weapon that came with him. I just found it laying around and I stuck it in his hand. Uh, I'm sure he came with a big rifle. Uh, but yeah, this is one of the G.I. Joe Marines and he looks really good. Then we've got Mutt, the G.I. Joe dog handler. See, I like the little scratches on his face that gives him some personality. And then he's got his dog, Junkyard. But it's kind of odd. They went with a like a bulldog with a big underbite for Junkyard. Where normally Junkyard is, uh, I don't know what breed he is, but he's not a bulldog. Anyway. And then we've got Bazooka, who is the G.I. Joe uh, Bazooka Trooper. And then what's he got? He's got a little fudgy bar as well. So yeah, he looks pretty great. He's got this kind of chest armor on, but if you take that off, he does have his numbered football jersey on underneath. Then we've got his buddy Alpine here. And Alpine looks really great. He's the like mountaineer. And so he's got this roped hook and everything. These items to help him climb, just like the vintage figure. So yeah, he looks really good too. And then we've got two of the Joe's Arctic Troopers. So we've got the original here with Snow Job. And you'll see I don't have him on a Creo base because he's got skis on. And those are removable. His hood is removable as well. So there you go. So yeah, he looks really good. Backpack with the ski poles. And then we've got Iceberg. So he looks really good as well. The goggles on the vintage figure 
sat up on the top of his helmet like that, but you can push them down over his eyes. And yeah, looks all right. All right, let's see the next batch. Now, all of these G.I. Joe Creo figures and vehicles are heavily inspired by the 80s toy line. But for those four guys in the back row there, those guys actually go a little further back, and they're based on the 70s figures, which was the G.I. Joe Adventure Team. And so these guys are really neat. Um, they might not be for fans of the 80s um, G.I. Joes, but if you're like a kind of a deeper fan and you know a little bit more about the history of G.I. Joe, these guys are a really fun inclusion in this line. So you see here that each of them come with a little replica of the box that these figures came in. And it even says on there in very small text, it says with lifelike hair, because that was one of the gimmicks in the 70s when they first gave G.I. Joe real lifelike hair instead of just the plastic hair. And these guys here have this fuzzy little felt hair piece to give them that real hair look. So the different color guys, so you've got one in orange and you've got one in camo and you see he's got a different box too to represent his action figure so this is the land adventurer he was the uh air adventurer and then we've got this guy here who is the what jungle adventurer yeah and so it's really cool i like these guys a lot and then even weirder is we've got bullet man so he's also from that era but he's a oh, this thing's upside down there but you see there he's got the bullet man box so this guy is kind of from a forgotten corner of G.I. Joe history. So it's kind of really fun that they managed to squeeze him in there. And yeah, it's a really fun figure with the chrome kind of bullet helmet. Okay, so now let's get back to the real American hero era of G.I. Joe. Where we've got Duke, one of the most well-known G.I. Joe members. And this is pretty simple. Does a good job of replicating the vintage figure. Then we've got Flint. Now, I don't have him here with his classic shotgun because, as we saw earlier, the shotgun was strapped to the front of his little uh, ATV vehicle there. But uh, he's got the shotgun shells there painted on his torso. Then we've got the pilot of the Dragonfly. So this is Wild Bill. And he's got a couple of little Western pistols there and his cowboy hat, which pops off. Then we've got Airborne. So this guy looks really great. The goggles, you can wear them kind of on the top of his head like they were sculpted on the vintage figure or you can pop them down over his eyes. And like parachute pack on the back. And then lastly, we've got the G.I. Joe Samurai Budo because of course G.I. Joe needs a samurai. But yeah, it's a very elaborate helmet. Looks pretty cool. And yeah, really great figure. All right, let's move on. Okay, so next up we've got tunnel rat here so the original tunnel rat figure was based uh, like his likeness was based on larry hama who was the guy that wrote all the gi joe comic books and all the gi joe file cards and was really instrumental in making everybody love gi joe as much as they do and so yeah this is a pretty good version of tunnel rat then we've got stalker the ranger from 1982 one of the original gi joes so he's got a pretty basic military outfit as all those 82 figures did and he looks pretty great also from 82 is the uh, driver of the vamp jeep this is clutch so again pretty plain but uh, that's what clutch looks like and it looks really good and then the jungle trooper ricondo with his iconic little twirly mustache and his hat that's pinned up on one side and it is removable of course yeah. so yeah, i really like that one then we've got law who is the MP and his dog order. Then we've got uh, dial tone. And so I like the way they recreated his backpack here. It's very reminiscent of the shape of the vintage figure backpack. And then you've got the GI Joe undercover specialist here chuckles in his Hawaiian shirt. Again, this looks a lot like the vintage figure. They've done a really good job of recreating the pattern on the shirt and everything there looks really good and then their original gi joe pilot this is ace with his uh kind of domed helmet much like the vintage figure head and yeah looks cool and this is the last of my gi joes so we'll start with tripwire in the back 
So he's the G.I. Joe detectorist. So he's got his mine detector here. Now his hose connects to his backpack, but unfortunately that has deteriorated over time and that has snapped. But uh, I really like this figure. This has actually made my top 10 list a couple of years back when this thing came out in like 2013, I think it was. He made my best of year end list just because not only was I really enamored with this whole wave um, of figures, but I just, I think this actually looks better than the original Tripwire figure. Um, and he's a character I always liked, but the figure always came across kind of, I don't know, wimpy looking. But yeah, I think he actually looks really cool here. Then we have the G.I. Joe Laser Trooper Flash. So this is another one of the 82 original guys. Uh, it looks like his visor, I don't know if it was intended to be yellow or it's just yellowed over time. But uh, yeah, he looks really good too. Big elaborate laser, also connects to his backpack. Then we've got Cutter, who in the vintage line came with the Whale Hovercraft. But as we saw earlier, this guy comes with the big battleship instead. And he's got his uh, life vest on, which I'm wondering if I maybe have it on backwards there. But uh, anyway, he looks pretty good with his little ball cap and everything. And then we've got Outback. He's got his classic survival shirt on there. Yep, looks really cool. I like that one. Then we've got Lady J. So this is based on the vintage figure that had the ball cap on. She didn't wear the ball cap in the cartoon so much. It would have been nice if they could have found a way to give her some hair as well as the ball cap because it seems kind of obvious that she doesn't have any hair underneath there so she looks like she's a cancer patient or something. But uh, otherwise, they've done a good job of recreating her like javelin weapon. And yeah, and she looks good. Then we've got Wetsuit. So he also doesn't have a display base because he's sporting some flippers there. But he's got his harpoon gun as well as this little device that the vintage figure came with. Uh, and then he's got his little breather tube, the goggles that go up and down. So yeah, I like this one a lot too because Wetsuit was a favorite figure of mine when I was a kid. Now this guy here is really great. This is Blowtorch. So you know, he's the, uh, the Joe Flamethrower Trooper. So he's got the flamethrower with the flame effect. The hose connects to the backpack. He's got uh, you know removable helmet and removable mask. Might have to wrestle with him a little bit. There you go. So you see, he's got his face underneath there. And then, clink. lastly, we've got Roadblock. So this looks a lot like the uh, version one Roadblock figure. He's got the big gigantic gun with the bullet belt coming off of it. Two piece bullet belt. So it's actually a little bit articulated. You can move that around. And yeah, he looks really good too. So there you go. Those are my G.I. Joe Creons. Okay, so that is my G.I. Joe Creo collection. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and please leave me comments below. You know, I love chatting with you guys down there. So yeah, I appreciate it. And yeah, I guess that's it for now. So until next time, have a good one.